Hey everybody, um, I wanted to come on and share some confirmations that I was given about the dream vision that I had and some other cool stuff. <laughs> it's amazing, our God is so amazing, y'all. Oh, mind blown away. Um, okay, so when I put the video out about the dream vision, of course, your carnal minds relate right away to a scripture about the Bible, or, you know, a chapter or something like this, right? And at the end, I had said, seeing the number six. So, of course, in my carnal mind, I'm thinking, you know, Revelation 6, you know, stuff like this. When in all reality, it might be something different. So... First, I got an immediate response to my video from another brother that had said um, it couldn't have been the AC that you're thinking that you were looking at because it wouldn't have been such a beautiful place. And I'm like, oh, this is so true. Okay, so we got that out. So that was that night, and thank you, brother, for that. Then yesterday morning, I got, a, oh, Lord, this is the third time on that number six, and there was a good reason for it. So I shared with the brother, and um, he was talking about how the six maybe wasn't a scripture or a chapter, but a date. And I'm like, okay, well, we, we know we're not date setters or, or don't look for dates because we know that we are in the season. That's all we need to know. It's imminent. It could be happening on a moment, right? And so we, we talked for a little bit, and he shared how he had seen two videos uh, right prior to watching mine that also were about a six, but it was about leading to April 6th. And he's not definitely a date setter either as well, but was wondering if possibly that could be leading to that. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. God's in control, right? So then he tells me, remember, um, the the study that we did a couple months ago, about a month ago, actually, and we were talking about Zachariah at the time. <laughs> Zechariah 14. He had no idea I had been led to Zechariah 14 after as well, which talks about um, the Lord's return. Okay. So, there's another confirmation. This is mind-blowing. It's like people are reading my mind, and I'm not saying anything. And they're all over the country, so they have no idea. Um, no clue. Only God. Only God. Only God. I'm just so humbled right now. So, at the same time, he just happens to say, look at Jer uh, Zechariah 6. And led me to a scripture there that I read as we were talking about the white horse, the black horse, the red horse, and all the other horses. Um, and it shows a picture at the top of his Bible of a white horse. <laughs> as Zachariah is talking about the horses and the chariots, right? <laughs> How cool is it? Well, I couldn't get any more closer, probably a little bit bigger and a little bit more muscular but that sure does look like the horse that I saw. Uh, very muscular, and that's what Byron says in his... Well, if you're subscribed to him, and, um, and, his, and, and he's talking about kings, the king of kings, and the Lord of lords coming. He's on his way. And how massive the horse was, and how muscular it was, right? Okay, so this is all connecting, and I'm like just 
blown away with what the Lord had shown me, like I said, and amazed, amazed. It, you're always amazed when the Lord does something, right? It doesn't matter. So, yeah, I do believe that, that dream vision that I had was speaking of the soon return of our king. But it gets even better. Okay, so last night I had taken a hot shower, getting ready for bed, very tired. And it was about midnight, and I'm sitting in bed. And I'm reading about, I'm doing a study on the beastitudes. So as I'm doing that, like I said, I'm, I'm living in a home. My bedroom's in the back on the first floor. There is a bedroom upstairs, and the upstairs isn't used, and this is not my home. But I feed all the squirrels and all the critters in the yard. Coffee. Yeah, coffee. Um, all the time. And I know that I have squirrels up on the house, of course. Uh, and on the roof, I can hear them all the time, and I see them all the time, and they're playing all the time. So I know when the squirrels are making noise in the attic because they sound like they're tumbling and rumbling and having a good time. But the floor squeaks upstairs. So all of a sudden, and now this is midnight, okay? I'm hearing footsteps upstairs and the floor squeaking, like towards the window to my right, above me and I'm thinking okay this is really really loud that does not sound like the squirrels <laughs> at all and my cat came in the room and my cat was her name is Pia and she weighs about 25 pounds she's a big cat <laughs> and she's a silver and gray tabby so she's looking at me and talking to me, you know, how they talk with their tails. And, of course, I blew it off as, no, you're not getting any more food tonight. But that's not what she was telling me. She was telling me something else. So after I had heard the footsteps and things upstairs, I sat there for a little while and closed my book. We just sat there in silence. And, of course, I heard it again. Well, of course, the enemy comes in like a flood and starts making me think about I had put some things in the central marketplace and well this guy pretended to make a long story short this guy pretended to want a bracelet that I had for sale and needed my address to send me a money order um, it wasn't a quick one because he wanted to see more jewelry and he wanted this and he wanted that and his financial was going to be sending me a money order, and I just, there was just some kind of creepy feeling about it. So, yesterday, you know, so that triggered right off in my brain something's wrong. And I'm thinking, wait, that guy in the marketplace has my address, he has all this stuff. I wasn't quite sure about him. I had a creepy feeling, even though I had checked his profile. And he looked legit. Of course, you take all the precautions you can, right? But hey, um, I'm doing all I can do right now to stay alive. And selling where I can on the marketplace and Facebook. <laughs> so all those thoughts were coming in my head. Okay, so maybe this guy knows where I live. Now he knows where I live, you know, all this stuff. And I'm getting this plan in my brain. I'm going to go to the kitchen, get this big steak knife or big, big butcher knife that I have uh, to get prepared. And I'm going to go upstairs boldly, right? <laughs> 65 years old. <laughs> Nothing, no fear. No fear in Jesus. I know who's got me. But I wasn't going to go to sleep until I figured out what that sound was coming from. And I'm like, oh, heck, Deb, you don't need that. You got Jesus. <laughs> Just get out there and see what's going on. So I did. And as I start heading out towards the living room, and it's 22 degrees, let me tell you. And it's a little after 12 now. 
I did not go upstairs first because I followed my cat. And my cat was leading me to the back door. And I'm thinking, Pia doesn't want to go outside at this time of night. What's going on? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Another one of those things that make you go, hmm, right? So I turned the back light on outside. And I see this thing. Well, I called it a thing then because I didn't know what it was. It was an unidentified object. Um, and I'm going to show you that in a minute. But I saw this, and I had to make sure that I didn't let my cat out and grab my robe and <laughs> my coat because it was 22 degrees, my flashlight. I had to go see what this is. Well, we had a bobcat here last week, but this was much bigger than that, much fatter. And my cat is like a silver and black tabby, like I said, and this was pretty similar, but I'm thinking, I'm not seeing the face, I'm just seeing the body part. And it's pretty big. <laughs> so I boldly open the door and go out there with my flashlight, and this thing runs away. Okay, so excuse the pictures and my old-fashioned way of doing this. So this is me going out the first time. <laughs> you can see my, my shadow, right? And I look at this critter kind of thing. Now, you can't see it that well because he had just turned his face, but this is the biggest raccoon I've ever seen at all. And he was like, Standing on his back legs at this point, and he had something in his hands. I didn't know if he was praying, begging me, thanking me for the food. I didn't know what he was doing. I'm like all about critters. It's okay. Uh, but I'm thinking, wow, that's a big raccoon. And for this to come from my cat was crazy, right? <laughs> okay. So that's when you see my shadow. All right. I'm sorry, old-fashioned work here. So then, um, like I said, this is coming from that creepy corner that I always see. See all the food here that I put on the ground for the squirrels and stuff? And then I look even closer. I'm outside now. And also what's really strange is I have a motion light right there. And there, the motion light did not come on. And I've just put new batteries in there, so I know it works. Okay, so here's this beautiful bandit-looking thing looking at me, and he's huge, and his eyes are glowing. <laughs> and I just laugh. And I'm thinking, well, how cute you are. And, oh, as a thief in the night, huh? You're a bandit, okay? <laughs> as a thief in the night was the first scripture that came to my mind. Well... Lord Jesus snatches away, but nobody's going to break in. And if anybody remembers a video a little while back, we had I had somebody who had tried to open a window when I had Milo. And Milo was the first one on that, right? And that literally <laughs> was a window being opened. Somebody was trying to break in, but I was watching. <laughs> Again, so then... Um, you can see him here. Okay. So then after he starts climbing up the tree now. And he's big. This guy is big. And then at the very end, I felt really bad. I didn't want him to leave. Um, but you can see how big he is. And he kind of turns around and looks at me. And he's so cute. He really is cute. But I certainly didn't want my cat out there. But she was the one that warned me. It was Milo the first time. And Milo's no longer with me. And Molly was here with me. Uh, trying to figure out what's going on. Because she follows me everywhere. She's a puppy, right? <laughs> so I had to go make sure she was locked in the bedroom. And everything was safe before I went outside to do some investigating. But as a thief in the night. this was, The Lord was showing me this I Again, are you serious? So this is how many knocks have I had at the door? Literally, when the dogs bark, 
and there's nobody there, and I know we all have been seeing this, <laughs> how many times there's been so many, I've had a possum, I've had the most strangest things in the city, and I'm a country girl. I'm used to all the wild critters and snakes, but I don't expect to see bobcats, mountain lions, and possums, and raccoons like this in the city. <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm just outside of city limits, but still, this is a city. This is crazy. This is how the Lord works, so this is amazing. This is total confirmation, again, as a thief in the night, right? And I just laughed, and oh, I was like jumping out of my skin, praising the Lord, thanking him. <laughs> I didn't hear any more noises after this, and as I go back into the bedroom, and I look at the clock, and guess what time it was? One eleven. No joke. So it was midnight when it all started. <laughs> and we know that we're like seconds away from midnight, right? And this cute little critter has literally got his, pretty much his arms wrapped around this big tree. Uh, <laughs> I do a lot of videos in this corner. The dogs play over here. The birds feeds. Uh, the bird bath and where I feed all the critters. So he's welcome here anytime. But I was just amazed at how the Lord showed me. And there were other comments as well that people had sent me about um, being on the narrow path. And that I was on that narrow path. And I was just like, wow, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Because we feel so unworthy a lot. And we feel like we're struggling and we're just not going to make it. And I'm wanting to post some things today because I got to live. I got to eat. And I'm a little nervous about it right now. So I do pray over everything and plead the blood <laughs> and over of Jesus over everything I sell. And I pray that it goes to the right person. But right now I'm praying that somebody will buy something. Um, the enemy knows what our weak points are. And he knew I needed money, right? So that creep was able to get in. So that shows us that we need to stay armored up. And there is so much going on. And people aren't who we think they are at all anymore. In more ways than one. And we really need to keep our eyes focused on Jesus and think on things above. That was my daily verse today, by the way. <laughs> Thinking about things above. <laughs> yes, exactly. Oh, keeping our thoughts in heavenly places because we're about to go there. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. So, as a thief in the night, he comes. This little critter. He looks like a little thief because he's got, looks like a little bandit. <laughs> the window opening, the knock at the door, the dreams, the visions. Brothers and sisters, what more do we need to know other than the king is on his way? The rapture is imminent. It could happen at any moment. There's so much going on right now. The confirmations are still rolling in. Amazingly. And I thank you all so much. I haven't been able to get back to that video yet because I've got, uh, it's been, it was just a full day of trying to get things done and and seeing what the Lord was showing me as well through the works of my brothers and sisters who were all over the country. <laughs> and this was just absolutely mind-blowing, absolutely mind-blowing for me. So... I pray in the name of Jesus that we are all ready. We know that we pray to be found accounted worthy. And we know that only Jesus can make us worthy, right? We know that we're saved by grace through faith. Faith pleases God. And faith is what he's looking for when he returns. Um, so, with that being said, <laughs> we are ready to meet our king. 
because soon and very soon we are going to see our king. Hallelujah. <laughs> I won't sing. Oh, and scare you away. I just looked at the clock, and guess what time it is? One eleven. This is no, this is crazy. Why did I glance at the clock? I don't know. Us crazy Christians do that, right? One 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 is for judgment, right? Okay. So, can you feel it? I can feel it calling in the air tonight. <laughs> I don't know. Hey, the Lord can use anything. He uses the oldies. He uses each other. He used, he used a, a donkey for Paul. <laughs> he can use anything. Don't put God in the box. <laughs> be, be cautious, of course. But look at your surroundings because sometimes the Lord is sending you a message. <laughs> That's incredible. And are you paying attention? <laughs> That's all he's saying. Are you paying attention? Are you watching? But he showed me that I was watching, and nobody's going to be breaking in this house as a thief in the night. But he can steal me away as a thief in the night. <laughs> That's okay. I'm ready for that. After ready, let's go, right? Um, because I believe in the free gift of salvation, and it is by grace that we are saved, not by works. Oh, stop stressing yourself out. Okay, the only thing that he, when the disciples asked him, Jesus said, I command that you love one another. Period. We need to love one another. And of course, love God with all your heart, mind, body, and soul. And love your neighbor as yourself. You've covered them all. If you're following them all. Because it's all about the heart. And a heart attitude. It's about love. For God to love the world. And that's all we're taking with us. Is our heart. And he knows our hearts. And he's merciful. And he's graceful. This little guy was so cute. If it wasn't 22 degrees, <laughs> no, he was scurrying away from me. He probably wouldn't have let me pet him anyways. I would have loved to. <laughs> I can't wait to get to heaven and be able to lay down with the lions. And How awesome. I I'm just blown away. And I've got my mind on heavenly things today. How about you? So... I'll keep it short and say Debbie from Texas <laughs> saying peace out, Maranatha. Keep looking up. The king surely is coming. <laughs>